In this video here, we're going to take a look at the power function. Now, so far, whilst calculating the probability of a type 2 error or the power of a test, we have always been given a single value of the population parameter of interest. Now, the issue here is that, in reality, population parameters are often unknown. And using past experiences, we may be able to kind of estimate values for our population parameter. However, because we don't know the value of the parameter here, we cannot deduce the power of the test. However, we can still calculate the power as a function of our relevant parameter here. And this is what we call the power function. So let's just formally define here the power function. So the power function of a test is the function of the parameter, theta in this case here, which gives the probability that the test statistic will fall within the critical region of the test if theta is the true value of the parameter. So a power function is useful because it allows us to calculate the power of the test for any given value of theta. And as a result then, we can plot a graph of power against theta. And that's quite useful. And we'll see an example of that in the next video here. Um, we're gonna take a look at plotting those kind of graphs. But for this video here, we'll just take a look at obtaining the actual power functions for a given tests. okay? And then finally here, if we are comparing two tests of a comparable size, what we would do here is recommend the test with the higher power within the likely range of the parameter, okay? So there we have it, a very quick introduction there to the power function. I think the best way to demonstrate the ideas here and the concept of the power function is to take a look at some practice questions here. So let's get started then with question one. Let's get started then with question one here. So what do we have then for question one? Well, we're told that a single observation X here is taken from a Poisson distribution with a parameter of lambda. This observation is used to test lambda equals 10 against lambda being strictly less than 10. And as we can see here, the critical region is chosen as x being less than or equal to 4. So for the first part of this question, then part A, it just asks us to find the size of this test here. So for part A then, to find the size of the test here, so size of test. So to find the size of the test here, just recall that this is equal to the probability that we reject h0 when it is true. So reject h0 here, reject h0 when true. Okay. So in the context of this question here, when would we reject h0 here? Well, we would reject h0 here when we are within the critical region here, which as we can see is x being less than or equal to four. So if we have the random variable x here, so we've got x then, which follows a Poisson distribution with a parameter here of 10. So if we assume that h0 is true then, our parameter here is 10, okay? Then in that case here, the size of the test, so size here is equal to the probability that we are within the critical region. So that's x being less than or equal to four. So x is less than or equal to four here. And we condition that on this random variable here or this distribution here, right? So given that x follows a Poisson distribution, so x follows a Poisson distribution with a parameter of 10 here. Okay. So to find the size here, this probability, just simply use your calculator here. So we go into stats mode, distribution. Obviously, this is a Poisson distribution. And in this case here, this is a cumulative probability, so it's going to be PCD. In that case, then it will ask for two things. It'll ask for X here, and it'll also ask for mu. So mu is simply our parameter here, which in this case is 10. So make sure you input 10 there. And then for X here, that is this value of four. So we input four there, press enter, and this gives us here the size of this test. So if you do this correctly then, what you should find two three significant figures here is we get 0, 0.0, so 0 0.0293 there, okay? And there we have it. So that's the solution to part A. And for part B then, so for part B here, it just asks us to show that the power function of this test is given by this expression here. Now for part B then, well, basically we take this line here and we now just adjust this to the fact that we're looking for the power function. So don't forget the power function. We don't know the value here of the parameter. That's the whole point of the power function, right? 
So for the power function here, we're looking for the probability that x is less than or equal to 4. In other words, we are within the critical region here. Then we condition this here on this distribution, but with an unknown parameter. So x follows a Poisson distribution, like so, with an unknown parameter here of lambda. Okay. Now, to evaluate this probability here, then, this would be the sum of the following probabilities. So this will be equal then to the probability that x equals 0 plus the probability then of x equals 1, so on and so on. You can see where this is going to go, right? So we just keep going here until we get to 4 plus the probability that x equals 3. And then finally here, plus the probability that x equals 4. Okay, now we don't know the value of the parameter here, right? So if x follows a Poisson distribution with an unknown parameter, let's just say that's lambda here, then the PMF, so that's the probability that our variable x here is equal to some value, let's call it little x here, that is equal then to e to minus lambda times lambda to the power of x, that's all over x factorial, okay? So for the first probability here then, the probability that x equals 0, we get e to the minus lambda. We then times this by lambda to the power of 0. So lambda to the power of 0, and that is all over then 0 factorial. Okay, that is supposed to be a 0. Let me just rub it out here just so you can see it perfectly. Don't want this to be any confusion here. So that's lambda to the power of 0. So that's my first probability here. Let's keep going then. So for the next one here, this would be plus. So we now have e to minus lambda. We then get lambda to the power of 1. So lambda to the power of 1. And that's all over 1 factorial. Let's keep going. We then get e to minus lambda. Lambda squared over 2 factorial. We then get e to minus lambda. Lambda cubed over 3 factorial. And then finally here for the very um, last probability here, we get e to minus lambda, lambda to the power of 4, and that is all over 4 factorial. Okay. Now the first thing that I'm going to do here then is factor out an e to minus lambda just as they've got here then. So we factor out the e to minus lambda here. So what do we now get inside the brackets here? Well, nice and straightforward, then we get lambda to the power of 0 over 0 factorial plus lambda to the power 1 over 1 factorial, so on and so on. So I'll write this out in full here. Technically, you could just skip this step right, and we get to the final solution here. But I do want to show all stages of my work in here. So we get lambda to the power of 0 over 0 factorial. We then have lambda to the power of 1 over 1 factorial. Lambda squared over 2 factorial. Let's keep going here. Lambda cubed over 3 factorial, and then finally here, lambda to the power of 4 over 4 factorial. Okay, and then to finish with here, let's just simplify the inside of this bracket here. So we get e to minus lambda. Now inside the bracket here, what can we simplify? Well, that would be the first two terms here, right? So lambda to the power of 0, that's 1. Anything to the power of 0 is always 1. That's over 0 factorial, which is also 1. So we get 1 over 1, giving us 1 there. We then have lambda to the power of 1, so that's going to be lambda over 1 factorial, which is also 1. So we get lambda over 1, which would simply be lambda. And then to finish with here, we just basically just need to simplify the denominators here. So 2 factorial, that's 2 times 1. So we get 2 there. So I get lambda squared over 2. And as you can see here, now basically once we simplify the denominators here, we will obtain the required results. So I get lambda squared over 2, lambda cubed over 3 factorial. So 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which would give us the 6 here that we need. So I get lambda cubed over 6. And then finally here, 4 factorial gives us 24. So we obtain lambda to the power of 4 over 24 there as required. Okay, so as required there. And there we have it. So as required. Giving us a solution to question one. 
So we just say look then at one more question here we have question two which as we can see is now looking at a binomial distribution. So as the question says here in a binomial experiment consisting of 10 trials x represents the number of successes and p is the probability of success here. In a test of p being equal to 0.4 against p being less than 0.4 the null hypothesis will be rejected if the number of successes is one or less. So in other words x is less than or equal to one here okay. So for the first part of this question then part a it's just asking us to find the size of this test here. So just as we saw for the previous question here. So for part A then, don't forget that the size here is equal to the probability of rejecting H0 when it is true here. So for the first part then, the size here, this is equal then to the probability that we reject H0, which in this case will be X less than or equal to one. So X is less than or equal to one here conditioned on this distribution then for x here. So x follows a binomial distribution. My parameters here are 10 and 0.4. So we assume that h0 is true then. So if h0 is true then p is equal to 0.4. So to evaluate this probability here then nice and straightforward just simply use your calculator here. So this is going to be b c d. Input all the parameters correctly then and if you do this correctly here what you should find then for the size of this test here is we get 0.0, so 0.0 here, 4, 6, 4 there. Okay, nice and straightforward there. That gives us the solution here to part A. Now for part B of this question here, it says show that the power function of this test is given by this expression here. So for part B then, well basically all we're going to do here is take this line then, now all we're going to do is replace p here with, well, we're just going to replace it with p. We don't know what that parameter is, right? That's the whole point of the power function. So rather than p being equal to 0.4, we just use p here as our parameter then for the probability of success. So we need the probability that x is less than or equal to 1 here, conditioned on, or given that x follows a binomial distribution, the parameters of 10 here, and p. Okay, so to evaluate this probability here then, nice and straightforward, this will simply be the probability that x is equal to zero plus the probability that x equals one here. Okay, so for a binomial distribution then, so if x follows a binomial distribution with parameters of n and p, the PMF here then, so the probability, our unavailable x here, is equal to x, some value x here anyway. This is equal then, so it's n choose x, so n choose x, we times this by p to the power of x, and we times this by 1 minus p to the power of n minus x. Okay, so let's just adapt this here then to these probabilities here and this distribution here. So in that case then, what do we get here? I'm going to get 10 choose 0, so I get 10 choose 0, and then times this by p to the power of x, where in this case x equals 0, so p to the power of 0, and then we times this here by 1 minus p to the power of 10 minus 0, so we get a power of 10 here, so that's the first probability here then, doing the same now for this probability here, what do we get then? Well we now get 10 choose 1, so 10 choose 1 here, we then times this by p to the power of 1, and then we times this by 1 minus p to the power of 9 here. 10 minus 1, given as a power of 9 there. Okay, so now let's simplify this here, and hopefully we should obtain this result here. Well, 10 choose 1, oh sorry, 10 choose 0 is 1. p to the power of 0 is also 1, so I get 1 times 1 here, which is 1. Then we times this by 1 minus p to the power of 10. So all we simply get here for this first probability then when we simplify it is 1 minus p to the power of 10. We get 1 minus p here to the power of 10. We then have this probability here. So 10 choose 1 is 10. We then times it by p here. So we get 10p. So plus 10p here. And then we times this by 1 minus p to the power of 9 here. So 10p bracket 1 minus p the power of 9 here. Okay, 
and notice now we've got exactly what we need here. So as required, and there we have it. So that would give us a solution here. So as required, as required, question complete. Okay, so there we have it. That gives us the solution there to the very last question, question two. And that brings the end of this video here on the power function.